it's not just about winning on Robot Wars. We like to recognize the efforts of all our competitors in the pits area. It's time for our special awards. The Best Design Award, the futuristic Plunderbird One. We are the International Rec Crew. This is the Plunderbird One. We've built the system around separate weapons pods. The first one has a battering ram with a laser-guided sight. The second pod has a circular saw which will flip out like this when it's operational and do some nice chopping up. We intend to kick some butt with this and be afraid there's a plunderstorm coming. At the moment, Plunderbird! Plunderbird! One, two, in, out, in, out. And Plunderbird is being hacked and is on the rack. And deactivate robots. Now, 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 beforehand you told me you were just going to barge them out the way. Well, they're obviously a bit too heavy and we just didn't quite manage it. But we will be back and we will get them next time. And the winner of the best design robot is... Razor. The main construction in the centre is steel with the main weapon. The outer drives are made of aluminium to keep the weight down. House robots in the PPZ, the perimeter patrol zone. The two competing robots don't want to go in there, otherwise they can incur the wrath of our own robots. And Razor, look at this! The favourite for tonight's heat! Destroying Inquisitor straight away with that immense crushing arm. They give it up, I think, the Inquisitor boys. Keith Millwood and Gavin Hatton, again, ominously, curling down, bending, destroying. Even the Sir Killalot camera moves away, worried. There's Matilda to the left. Well, Inquisitor, I think they've got no chance now. But the winner for the second year running is Razor. Well done to them again. Leech Brothers against the firm friends of the Razor team on the attack. Trying to get that crushing claw. Cross between a claw and a beak to get some purchase on Agrobot. Piston ram into action there, but Razor was quick to move away and now pushing Agrobot once again. Scratching down on the surface of Agrobot, but again, only superficial damage, really. You've seen very little damage caused on Razor in the entire battle. But look at this, it's found a weak spot on Agrobot! Crumpling, tearing, rending, ripping! Shredding! Is Agrobot immobilised there? No! Come spinning away! There is life in Agrobot yet! In goes Razor once again to try and claw down another scratch, but the main damage there, look! On the rear, underneath the piston battering ram, which droops melancholy now. Can, can I have a look close up at what happened around here? <gasps> yeah, just spoiled the paint a bit. And we say genius, a second award for Gemini, deservedly so. Activate. So Gemini can split from the start, but if you immobilise one of those cluster bots, you put the whole thing out of the picture. So will Ruff Ruff Dougal concentrate on one machine, go for both, or simply concentrate on survival? Ruff Ruff Dougal is exposed. There underneath, you can see the very mechanics. You can see the internal flywheel designed to stabilise the robot. It's made out of scrap. And from the evidence of the opening seconds, it's heading back to the scrapyard and not to a safe kennel. Sir Killalot is waiting also to take Rough Rough Dougal for a walk to doom. Gemini nagging and worrying. They look like two little fleas in the dog fur out there. Look at this, Steve <laughs> And off came the ears. Oh, dear, that looks most sad, doesn't it? Superb stuff for the Dougal boys. <laughs> the brothers, Peter and Martin Sturgis. 
in all sorts of trouble. Gemini, well, one of the cluster bots has almost disappeared and underneath there. Look at that. The side skirts, they call it, on, on a dog like Dougal. You know your dog shows. The skirts are being ripped away. Oh, dear, the tail's still in there, just about waggling. It's vibrating out there. It's not moving very fast. I think it may well have just nudged the, the pit release. Certainly it has now. Oh, dear, the fur is flying. It's a dog's life, isn't it, Dougal? And the winner is Razor. Congratulations to them. They look, they feel each other out. And Razor's feel has the touch of cold steel. Three tons of crush back. Crushability factor on Robot Wars. Bigger Brother was bumped and bashed and spinning. Wedged onto a wheel there, I think. They're locked together, are they? Well, they're spin. Bigger Brother are doing just that. They press the release button. Are they going to drive Razor the way of Hypnodisc? Hold him, hold him, says Vincent Blood. Oh, Ellie, what's happening out there? She's trying to peer and see. And Bigger Brother, driven on by Dad Ian, is forced ever backwards in the grand final. Are they seconds away from defeat? Do not count Bigger Brother out just yet. We've seen so many twists and turns in this series. The sergeant comes out, has a look, Bigger Brother away. A lick of flame for the sergeant on the back of Razor. Razor. Oh, doesn't that look ominous? The judges are going to have to decide. What a brilliant feat by Bigger Brother to hold on. Razor has not finished them off. Not yet. And it won't do so. The best design award. Well, just look at that vertical spinning disc of 259. Absolutely awesome. The winner of the best design award Adam Clark and 259. Will the new kid on the block, 259, destroy Wild Thing? Who've been there, done it, put the logo on the back. 259, bunching and bruising into Wild Thing, tossing it over and over and over. Look at this. This is determined destructibility from 259. Dog with a bone there. Wild thing! Can there be any life left after that sort of formidable onslaught? Well, Nick Adams is very experienced. He's a good driver. And he turns Wild Thing away from the blade onto the side of 259 to hold on there. Hold it on for grim death, really. 259, statuesque, upright. Judge Shred the quicker. There goes the flipper. They're fighting for the UK, don't forget, for the right to go through to meet a German machine in this special event. Out comes Growler, and watch for those formidable jaws. 